Hello, everyone. My name is Paul Third, and this week on Mixing Wednesdays, I have a little message for some of the lovely guys at Solid State Logic. Now, for anybody that doesn't know, there is a gear slot, well, gear space as it's called now. There's a thread all about the SSL vintage drive, the SSL Fusion plugin that I did a review of uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now, the guys at SSL obviously uh, <laughs> didn't take kindly uh, to the findings um, that I had in the video and some of the conclusions that I made via some of my um, discoveries, as they like to put it. Now, I have to be very careful um, what I do because I've spoke to many people about this and they're a little bit worried because obviously everybody knows I'm autistic and um, I sometimes struggle to catch my filter because whatever comes out this mouth is just, you don't know sometimes what's going to come out this mouth and sometimes I think what I've said is okay and then I end up causing a shit storm. Now, long story short, uh, what happened this week was uh, somebody that works from SSL messaged me um, via Instagram and asked if they could have my email because the developer and like the, the original Fusion owner or someone like that wanted to like discuss um, their findings with me and basically speak to me about my video. So I did that, I gave him an email um, and I received a message. I'm not going to tell you who um, that is because again, I've spoke to other people and this is Paul. Be very careful about this because they've sent you an email. Um, but I can still speak about it because it's my, it's my emails, okay? But I'm not going to tell you who it is. You can take a guess who it is, I suppose. But I received a message from somebody from SSL. And what I'm going to do is I am going to read it out to you, uh, but not in my accent, <laughs> just because I'm in a bit of a funny mood and I want to do it in a different accent because I suppose I can. It's my channel. If I want to read something in a certain accent, suppose I could do it. So this is a message that I received from a high-ranking uh, member of SSL. And um, yes, this is a, my little accent. Does my accent have any representation of what this person sounds like? I don't know. But either way, here is the email that I got sent today. Hello, Paul. I'm going to start off nice and easy. I have no intentions to start arguments on the internet. I generally find them massively unproductive. Equally, I'm not going to accuse you of slander, defamation or anything similar despite your assertions in this video. I could, but it would be pretty painful for us both but probably you more than me. <laughs> we don't deliberately make plugins sound worse than hardware, all right? I've been around the user forums for years and years and generally find myself as the tight internet face of SSL and strongly believe that real conversation always beats internet noise. From that, I've managed to become somewhat embroiled in a thread on gear space discussing your Fusion hardware versus plug-in video. You can find it here. I've linked to page 9 where I step in and looking for posts from Jim at SSL will bring you up to speed. The chap in the video looks nice and it is well presented but I have reservations about his methodology. His understanding of how the circuit works and his suggestion that we deliberately attempt to sell crippleware. Who is Paul Third? And what experience does he really have to be the final arbiter on the importance of side harmonics? His LinkedIn profile suggests serious experience in the UK carpet and tiling retail industries. <laughs> what? Fusion is a stereo processor. He says it works well in stereo. Some of his points are indeed interesting, but others are well off the mark. At least you know who I am, despite my lack of YouTube channel, Patreon page, and voucher deals from Access Analog. However, I do have to take issue with a couple of things in it, which I've set out in the post on Gearspace and would probably be a horrendous waste of both our lives to just copy paste here. One is your use of a measurement tool that isn't necessarily appropriate for the task in hand. Your discovery, in quotations, of a low frequency bump that nobody has reported hearing. While we recognise a bit of code that's causing this to be measured this way by this particular tool in a certain way, the audible effects of it are limited to small amounts in the very, very low frequency range. Another is the way the circuit is designed to react at different density settings. 
and how it may skew the measurements you took. Finally, the whole side harmonics, abbreviations again, <laughs> thing, I don't think that's the correct way to describe it, and I think you mean harmonics on the side component of a mid-side encoded stereo signal. Your graph isn't wrong, but I think you're pointing the finger at the wrong perpetrator. As we model single channels of fusion, then mid harmonics should always equal side harmonics as THD should be applied evenly. However, in the hardware, there is inevitable component tolerances that affect stereo behavior, and we think what you've measured is the difference between two channels of excess analogs hardware rather than some inherent lack of modeling in the plugin. Well, hey, by encoding into mid sign, we can't be sure which side of the stereo is right or wrong or indifferent, and by purely only using side, that you never actually know. Without running a factory test, we can't be totally sure whether this left-right discrepancy in access analogs unit was there from the factory or caused by any of their modification processes, but your graphs appear to show it is there. Perhaps we've learned that some of the most important magic of the vintage drive circuit is the BTS where it doesn't perform as intended. One might argue that we could take an average of a number of fusions and measure the differences between multiple units and then apply that as an offset to the plugin for a best fit. And depending on the feedback we get from our own pool of fusion owning engineers and producers like Alan Mulder, Michael Brower, Wuhei, Adrian Hole, etc, etc, we might have a look at it. We tend to prioritise people's ears over graphs where we can and we tend to go with people who actually own the hardware as well as the software when we evaluate the effectiveness of our code. If it is something that interests you, I would be more than happy to pass your details onto our product management team as a possible member of the beta guys we work with. But we do generally prefer to have people who are long-time SSL users so their ears are tuned to the family sound and behaviour. It helps us nail bits of the circuit, you see. We're obviously happy to have conversations with people about things, but we're not massively happy to have fingers pointed at us unfairly. I think that there's some language in your video that on reflection may not be entirely accurate and you may wish to consider in your future videos. I'd also imagine that you won't be massively happy about me pointing the providence of some of your content publicly, but I hope that you take it in the spirit of we actually make these products rather than just make videos about them. And I only did it on Gearspace where everybody doubts everybody else's credentials anyway. If you're thinking of doing more SSL-related content in the future, we'd be more than happy to offer some official response slash comment ahead of your publication if you think it might be helpful. Even some unofficial behind-the-scenes advice if it is more appropriate. You do realise that making a balanced video is not always the way to get the most views, but it would be nice for us to have opportunities that suggest any absolute inaccuracies so that your own content stands stronger. If there is any SSL related you need, please feel free to contact me. I'm not going to post any Dan Worrell type fuss for you on YouTube, but picking arguments with manufacturers with incorrect data on a product that you don't know how it works doesn't feel like good advice for your viewers. To quote your one comment, I'd rather have an understanding of where he felt I was wrong so we could discuss it. I look forward to seeing your next video, possibly on how to measure non-linear behaviours well. <laughs> if you'd like some detailed tips, I can ask some of the engineers from the R&D to step in to explain further. Okay, there you go. Um, if anybody thinks that um, accent uh, sounds familiar, hmm. coincidence, eh? So, um, either way, okay, either way, I can't speak personally, and I've spoken to many people about it, and <laughs> honestly, quite people, um, a lot of engineers close to me that look out for me <laughs> have been very worried <laughs> about this video. They do feel I have to do it, um, but they were like, Paul, just be very careful. So, I'm not going to speak about how I personally feel about that email because I don't want to get in any legal shit. <laughs> like, I get in trouble or I like, okay, I don't know. I, get, I, don't, I was supposed to get bailiffs at the door. <laughs> Why the fuck would I get bailiffs at the door? I don't know. I've, I just got myself in some legal bother. I got the video taken down or demonetized or something like that. I don't know what would happen. So I'm not going to give my personal 
um, opinions and feelings on that email. But I thought I would share it with you just so you guys have a bit of context about the fusion, as obviously SSL themselves are talking about the fusion, what they found. And obviously, I want to make sure of anything that I put out on my channel, I want to make sure that it's, it's, it's kind of, I was going to say concrete, but again, following on from last week's video, talking all about the plugin doctor stuff, you know, we can't really say what I see in analyzers as concrete, but it kind of gives us an indication of something that may be there, right? So take from that as you will. I'm not going to say, uh, you are clever people, right? You'll make up your own opinions and your opinion is your own opinion. Remember, it's very hard for somebody that's got Asperger's not to say how they feel. Um, so I can't speak about that, okay? And that is what it is. However, what I am going to address, which I think is absolutely fair, is the Gear Sluts, Gear Space, sorry, I keep on, I'm always going to call it Gear Sluts because that's what it was for years. The Gear Space um, posts from Jim at SSL. Now, Gear Space is a public forum, and to me, it's public, so it's a uh, fair game. Now, from my point of view, right, being a store manager and being in retail and management, right, for like five years, like, I find that very unprofessional. Like, you imagine, like, like hypothetically, like, was like high up in sales or something like that. I had quite a high position in SSL, you know. It would be quite shocking to me that like somebody of that high stature, especially that that's like works for a company and is possibly publicly telling people that they work for that company, that like instead of proving the YouTuber wrong, right, they decide to like go down the route of like, can you trust this person, right? <laughs> like this guy worked in carpets. Like, so fuck about working carpets. What's that going to do with anything? And from there, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. <laughs> basically to the point where Jim at SSL is basically just thrown his, like, dummy right out of the pram, right? The toys are right at the pram. Uh, and he's talking, like, all about fucking <laughs> flaming. He, he flamed SSL, right? And so it's, it's all right for Paul Third to flame SSL, but I can't flame Paul Third. I'm like, fuck, mate. You gotta grow up, man. You, you gotta grow up and realize that this is YouTube, right? Look, guys, in my opinion, there are much better ways of trying to defend a company or a brand, okay? Uh, instead of trying to go down personal routes and trying to like um, create doubt, which is obviously what that post is all about, against talking about me being a store manager and retail, I worked in carpets. Again, didn't speak about the fact that like I've got an audio degree or, you know, I've been running the YouTube channel for over a year. And I've been learning lots and lots and lots of stuff. And the fact that, you know, I do have nearly 8,000 subscribers and, you know, I've got a network of very clever engineers around me uh, and I've learned a lot and I've shared those experiences via my channel. Again, he didn't want to mention that. And guys, I have to tell you right now, right, this is going to be a common theme. Uh, for as long as I do what I do, it's going to be common, right? People are going to try and create doubt. But the biggest problem that they've got trying to create doubt with me is that I'm on the same page as you. I think people have tried to kind of quote me as an authority and stuff in the past and I'm kind of been very quick to kind of be like, I'm just a guy that's got an interest in audio, like learning and trying to understand what you're seeing. By the way, there was a lot of talk about Plugin Doctor, but in the SSL video, it was Bertram Curve Analyzer. That's what I was using with the hardware and the plugin. I keep on, everybody wants to have a go at Plugin Doctor, but it was Bertram Curve Analyzer. So just kind of putting it out there. All I'm doing is showing what the analyzers are showing me, right? No developer has ever, now I've asked many developers, no developer has ever, ever replied back to me when I've asked them, what do you use? Tell me what you use. If you feel that Plugin Doctor or my analyzers are not giving me um, realistic results, then tell me what you use. And then that way I can give my audience consistent results. But then they just ghost me and they will not reply back to me. Because guess what? No developer or manufacturer wants me to know what they use. Why? Because what this is kind of showing you that's very obvious, I'm chapping on the door. Why do the developers not make videos? Why do they not show you what's going on underneath the hood? Why don't they do level matched ABs, right? Here's the hardware and here's the plugin. Let's do a level matched AB, let's show you what's going on underneath the hood, here's what's going on with the Fusion and here's what we implemented in the plugin and this is how close this is. But then what I find even funnier is that like, when I released that video, I got loads of comments where people are like, mm, obviously the plugin's not going to sound like the real deal. Obviously it's not. Right? Why would you sell a hardware gear at like three and a half grand and sell a plugin at £200 that can get the exact same sound? Why would you do that? But then, <laughs> but then I've got again Jim at SSL coming back at me saying, how dare he say that like we cripple. Now, by the way, I, I never once said they cripple. Right? If you're going to quote me, quote it right. I'm pretty sure what I did say was that in my belief, and it's still my opinion, that manufacturers make plugins 
to sound close-ish to the hardware. Because in terms of the plugins that I've tried that have been endorsed by the manufacturer themselves, they've not been very close. There's elements of the plugins that are not consistent to the hardware. And they're making these claims, right? That I'm not making the claims that this is like the SSL Fusion, like in the box. This is you can get the hardware in the box. This is a faithful recreation. I'm not say, I'm not making those claims. All I'm doing is sticking the hardware which comes via Access Analog because I can't get my hands on the real deal, and I'm comparing that to plugins using whatever tools I can to analyze and measure. I'm doing the best with what I've got. If you don't want me to use Plugin Doctor, give me another alternative. Tell me what you use, and I'll get more consistent results. Okay, you can't have it both ways. You can't just be throwing out plugins with big massive marketing claims on them, because guess what? On a lot of hardware versus software videos on YouTube, what is everybody saying, right? This doesn't sound like the hardware. And Jim SSL is talking all about like my use of Span, right? So if that wasn't good enough for you, Jim, I actually went back and created a new preset with Span so you can really, really see the side harmonics, okay? I can't, I, I can't say much about the whole access analog thing because I, I don't really know what angle um, they're going down with this. But all I can tell you is that here is the SSL Fusion. There's side harmonics in the hardware. Now let's try another SSL hardware from Access Analog, the X-Logic, like the G-Bus, right, compressor. As you can see, there is mid harmonics, but look at that, there's no audible side harmonics. There's none. And then if you go to the GSAT Pro, as you can see, it adds in side harmonics. Span is working. Now, I don't know much about the Access Analog world, okay? I, I've only tested it so far. But in terms of what I can see, I've got two SSL units from Access Analog. One is creating audible side harmonics, the other one isn't. And in terms of the density function, you know, as you can see from, as you all read from a lot of the gear slots post, again, like Jim SSL is very, very keen to make out that, yes, there is a form of code that is creating that. Um, and it's it's very, very low. It's very It would be inaudible, but still not the hardware. Is it? It's not the hardware, because I showed you the hardware to the analyzer. You can't say that the analyzer's broke, because the hardware doesn't do it. Right? I gave it the exact same test. The signal was being run through the exact same test. To me, it's a little bit confusing, because it seems to be, in one hand, they're saying, yeah, it is in there. Yeah, that is right, but... Uh, it's, it's that low, it's that low in the frequency spectrum that you're not going to hear it. When I've had lots of comments from lots of subscribers telling me that they've used the density function, and guess what? They're like, oh my, I could hear that. It's like a build up in the low end. I could hear this low end. People can hear it. And in terms of like trying to talk about my blind tests, my blind tests are my blind tests. You left no tears behind the beautiful smile. I was able to pick them out in a level matched blind test at different gain levels. I was as fair as possible. All I'm doing is telling you what I'm seeing, okay, going by the analyzers, and then using my ears, okay, which is what we always say, use your ears, trust your ears. I trusted my ears, and that's how I was able to pick them out. Was I able to pick out the files? Yes. Was it level matched? Yes. Was it a blind test? Yes. Was it at different gain levels? Yes. Why could I pick out the hardware versus the software? because the hardware had more width and the plugin was more focused in the middle. That's it. In the end, it is all entirely subjective. Okay, what I hear is what I hear. I don't care what Jim at SSL has to say about it. I heard what I heard, and I'm telling you what I heard. So to end the video, Jim at SSL, please, honestly, 
take a bit of advice from me. Whether you, you don't want it anyway, I don't care. But my advice to you is, instead of trying to flame me or like getting in arguments with people on forums, why don't you just prove me wrong? Why don't you just show the analyzers that you use, show me and my audience what the hardware should look like, what the plugin should look like in the analyzers that you would have used to measure, right, to ensure that the plugin and the hardware measure correctly. I have no issue in being proved wrong. If I have shown something, I've said something that's wrong, I would like to make sure that I put that right. And if I've said something wrong or I've, I've read an analyzer wrong or the analyzer itself is just completely wrong, then I'll be humble and I'll take it on the chin and I'll learn from that experience. Don't try and create doubt by fueling stuff between me and Dan Worrell, okay? Jim, there's no point in mentioning what happened with me and Dan. There's no going to cause any more doubt in people's minds. People know me, people know what I do, and they know that I have the best intentions at heart. And all I'm here to do is to learn and to give that learning to my audience so we can all have a better understanding of the tools that we are using. So let's see how we got on with this whole little debacle. My name is Paul Third. This is Mixing Wednesdays, and I'll see you again next week.